Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the crowd, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, We play the flute for you. And you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. want you to have as a theme for today when God isn't who you think he is when God isn't who you think he is pray with me God as we go to your word we ask you to speak to our heart Line up our hearts and our minds and our souls that we might commune with your spirit, that we might find in your word that which we need to face the day. Not only to face today, but to be able to speak to others about who you are and to encourage them to come to you, to see how good you really are. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. There's a whole lot of people out there that are sick, that need healing. There are those who have fallen that need lifted. There are those that are humbled that need exalted. Those that are meek, that are looking to inherit the earth. The blind are looking to receive their sight. The captives are looking to be set free. The deaf want to regain their hearing. The lost want to dis get discovered. The oppressed want to be delivered. Those that struggle want relief. And those who are empty are seeking to be filled. If you don't leave with anything else today, I want you to leave with at least another dose of reality. Only God does healing and lifting. Only God does exalting and blessing. Only God does delivering and finding and relieving and reviving and renewing and restoring and filling. It is God who has done it before and God who is waiting to do it again. I'm convinced that God is still in the business of transforming lives. I'm convinced that God doesn't want poverty and he doesn't want fatherless families. God wants everyone to get a good education. God wants, rather doesn't want any child left behind. God does not want anyone to suffer. God does not want prisons built and more criminals to fill them. I don't believe and I'm convinced that God has not intended for the perils of this world to prevail. He did not intend for this creation to falter. He did not intend for the economy to be in such disparity. 
those at the fringes of society to be in such despair. He did not intend for us to even have a, a, a generation post Garden of Eden. I'm convinced. I'm convinced that he did not want a, a post resurrection generation that still was filled with war and filled with drugs and filled with hatred and filled with poverty. I don't believe for one moment that that's what God wanted when he sent his son to die on the cross to save us of our sins. I don't believe for one moment that Jesus, when he got up on the third day and promised that he would send the Holy Spirit, that it was so that we had a war-filled world. And I'm stuck here again with proclaiming as I always do, God is amazing but this ain't heaven. Mm -hmm. That's right. And as much as I know about God with his resurrection power and his healing power and his delivering power and his lifting up power and filling power and revival power, I sometimes step back and look at the world and say to myself, how is it that God hasn't or God isn't or God doesn't? And I'm asking the question today, what to do when we find out that God is not who we think he is? Perhaps a better way to put it is, who, if he turns out to be who, if, if Jesus in particular turns out to be who, one, we think he ought not to be, and then two, he doesn't become who we think he ought to be. Maybe I should put it a different way. When I came to Jesus, I had all kind of preconceived notions about who Jesus was and who Jesus ought to be. What do you do when you find out he's not that? That's my question. That's my question. When we find uh, Jesus in this story here, what we find is Jesus in a society that is um, grappling with and wrestling with why and how they could be the chosen people in an oppressed reality. How could they be God's favorites and suffering what God's, uh, God's garbage ought to be receiving? In their minds, they're thinking, this Israel, this promised land ought to be ours, and our king ought to be on the throne, and instead we wake up every day under the thumb of Rome. I'm wondering if today is anything like then. You have people waking up every day wondering, why with an amazing God we have, I'm still crippled. Why with an amazing God that we have, am I still blind? Why am I still poor? Why do I have this horrible job? Why can't my family get right? Why is my community in upheaval? Why are there so many vacant lots? Why are there so many people stuck on drugs? Why can't we keep the drugs from coming to our community and the guns from coming into our community when we don't manufacture either one? Why is it that we can see a bomb being shot off from North Korea and we can't catch the plane coming in with the mess that deteriorates and destroys our communities? You're amazing, God, but sometimes we wonder why you aren't who we think you ought to be. When we wake up and we just want the mess out of our life today. And we think God ought to be the today kind of God, yes? yes. And somehow today he doesn't do anything about it. You see, we find ourselves here where Jesus is with the crowd. Jesus just sent off the, 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 the disciples to go and start knocking on doors. You've got John the Baptist in jail. I don't know if you realize, um, John the Baptist had sent his disciples to Jesus. John had his own disciples. 
John, remember, he was baptizing everyone in the wilderness. And he was telling everyone, repent and turn from your sins. And he told everyone when Jesus came by, look and behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. That's the one you should be following. And then imagine his disciples coming back to him. But John, is this really the Messiah? Is this really the one or should we look for another? And John sends them back and says, you go ask him. That'll probably preach right there. When you find yourself in a storm that won't relent, you go ask him. When you find yourself at the hospital bed of someone you love so dearly, you go ask him. Uh, you go ask, right? I wonder if John the Baptist in jail was probably wondering, wait a minute, the Messiah is here, the kingdom of God is here, and here I am stuck in jail. How is this so? Hmm. It's amazing that God, or rather Jesus, was responding to them because in this particular story, we have Jesus talking to the crowds after the disciples had gone out and many were coming back with the reports of how many rejected him. Listen to what Jesus was saying to, to, to them in the rejection. That's what happens sometimes when you don't get all of the uh, scripture in for the reading. Jesus says, Matthew 11, starting at verse 20, Then he began to denounce the cities where most of his mighty works had been done because they did not repent. Isn't it something how we can wonder what it is about Jesus and we can ask the question, I wonder if he turns around and talks to us and says, well, what should I do when you don't turn out to be who you say you are or turn out to be who I think you ought to be? Hmm? How many of us are everything we ought to be? Hmm. Hmm. He says, woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, who, rather, will you be exalted to heaven? You will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty work done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you that it will be more tolerable of the day of judgment for the land of Sodom than for you. So what do we do about the rejection that Jesus gets? Jesus sends the disciples everywhere, and he's going to send us everywhere, and we're going to give our peace, and we're going to proclaim the good news, and we're not going to talk about who Jesus is, not we're going to talk about who Jesus is, and people are going to get healed, and people are going to get revived and renewed and restored, and people are going to get lifted up, and all of this is going to happen, but at the same time, you're going to have thousands who reject you because they reject Jesus. And Jesus pauses to say, woe to them. Don't you worry about them. Remember last week we, he said to us, I got you. Yeah. Yes. He's also, I got them. Uh -huh. Don't worry about the ones that don't accept me. I got them. I got something for them. <laughs> hmm? Woe to them. When Jesus is talking, you're talking in a place in a society where violence is everywhere. You're in a place where, 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 where again, the oppression is everywhere, where despair is everywhere, where the Romans uh, are policing the state everywhere, where it just doesn't seem that the stuff that we're proclaiming is the stuff that's true. This is what I love about Jesus. Jesus says, well, you think I'm supposed to take up arms and go slay Caesar? You think I'm supposed to take up arms 
and have everybody else take up swords. You thought when I sent out the 12, they were going to recruit an army to take up arms and to get their slingshots and to get their bows and arrows and the shields. And you thought we were going to march on Rome and you thought we were going to overthrow Rome with violence. And Jesus is like, there's enough violence out there. That is not the answer. And that is not my plan. The kingdom of God is coming here and has arrived here. But it's not here so that we can go fight the fight like they do. Fire with fire, as they say. I still want to understand that phrase. How do you beat fire with fire? I'm not sure. But we read a little while ago when, 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 when the prophet said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. And I wonder if it's that kind of fire we need to be looking for. What Jesus says is the answer to you, and this is a one-liner, and I'm getting ready to sit down. Because it's not a whole lot to think about in the way of reading scripture after scripture. Today it's a one-point moment that we need to pay attention to. Because... Truly, humanity has yet to get it. When Jesus says the kingdom of God is at hand, he's not saying that the sovereignty and the power and the authority of God is going to come down here and smite people. To kill people. To overthrow them with violence. Instead, he says, because woe to them and they're going to be taken care of in the judgment. He says, come to me. When you want to stand up and you want to fight with violence, come to me. When life gets too hard and too heavy, come to me. When you don't know what you don't know, come to me. When you don't know where to go or what to do, come to me. When you think you got it all together and discover that you didn't want even close, come to me. When, when the world is shattering around you, come to me. When when I don't turn out to be who you thought I was supposed to be, come to me. If you're no other time, that's the time to come to me. When you don't understand me, come to me. Yes. You see, because you're probably carrying something you ought not carry. You're probably having a burden you ought not have. And he says, let that burden down. Let it down and come to me and take mine up. You see, it's a burden when you think we're supposed to rise up and beat up and kill everybody, and we can't. That's a burden. When you think you're supposed to just wake up one day, and you know your boss and said the last wrong thing, and you just want to. <laughs> Jesus says, that is so not in the way. <laughs> that is not. I feel you. He said, I feel you, but come to me. I will take care of that. Come to me. And see, when he says, come to me, and he says, uh, come to me and, and give me your burden, and I'll give you rest, then what he's saying is, you have to put your cares in his hands. See, put your desire in his hand. Put Rome in his hand. Put the soldiers in his hand. Put the religious leaders that are stealing people's money in his hands. Put those who are <clears throat> raping the communities in his hands. And then he says, take my yoke on you. Carry this with me. Take from me and learn from me and find out what the kingdom of God is really all about. And you'll find rest. Why? He says, because it's not hate that kills hate. Love does. Believe it or not, I think Paul said love conquers all. That means love is going to conquer poverty. Love is going to conquer um, hate. Love is going to conquer war. Love is going to conquer the uh, strife. Love is, love is going to conquer suffering. Love, love is going to conquer it all. But guess what? You'll never know it unless you come to me and actually practice it. And if you come to me and link up with me, if you come to me and carry love with me, if you come with me and spread love with me, that's what's going to conquer Rome. That's what's going to conquer those in, 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 in government, the, the Congress and the Senate. That's what's going to conquer the, um, 
excuse me, the, the local governments and the local police forces. That's what's going to get folks to put the guns down. That's what's going to keep the gun in the police officer's holster. It's going to be love. And it's going to be love that you and I link up together and link up with Jesus. That's how we're going to do it. But if you never try that, then it's never going to work because you never tried it. And you're never going to see tables turn until you try it. So when we realize that God isn't who we think he's supposed to be, because we're thinking about God in terms of what we want. And so I'll leave it with this. Last week, it's not your reputation, it's his that's on the line. This week, it's not your will, it's his. It's not your ways, it's his. It's not your desires, it's his. It's not your plan, it's his. It's not the way you want to do it, it's the way he wants to do it. But the funny thing is that Jesus says, if you link up with me, you'll find that it's so much easier. You'll be at so much more peace. It will, it will go so much better. You will be able to handle the enemy so much faster. The enemy will leave you alone so much quicker. Amen. Life will turn around so much better because you have a kingdom of God. You've got people loving one another. Yes. You've got people giving to one another. You've got people living for one another. I guarantee you, if we show that in this world, life's going to change. The world's going to change. Jobs will change. No, maybe it won't change overnight. That's what we want. Because we want my change to come. You know, sometimes it is about us. Sometimes we pray for our change, and sometimes that change comes like that. But sometimes it don't. And that didn't mean that God changed because it didn't. Thy will be done, O oh God. And if we go ahead and just give it all to him, link up with him, take what he wants done upon us. It's not as heavy as what we want. If we take what he wants upon us, we won't spend restless nights, we'll sleep well. We take his yoke upon us, and if we learn from him, then we'll know him better then our expectations will be right from him. And if we humble ourselves, which means that pride won't get in the way, we'll find rest for our souls. And it indeed will be light. And we will know Jesus for who he really is. Amen. Amen. Page five.